Now we're going to set up Django to use a production grade static file server. Now this means that we can use it in development and in production, but when we go into production, we certainly want to have a production grade static file server. And that's the idea here. So this same concept, once we actually do it once, you can do it multiple times for your different environments if you need. If you don't need to do that, you can use the same one for both environments, for both development and production. I think better practice is to have different environments, and we'll talk about some strategies on how to do that. So to get this going, we are going to be using this blog post right here, and more specifically, the DigitalOcean Spaces service. Now, the DigitalOcean Spaces service is object storage. It's an S3-capable storage. So if you've ever used AWS S3 or Amazon Web Services S3, this is a drop-in replacement for that. You just need to change a few configuration items, and then you, you're ready to go. So now what we want to do after you reference this blog post, feel free to use this in the future. That's kind of the point of it. Um, but we're going to be going through this one in this actual video. Um, and now let's go ahead and jump into our DigitalOcean console and navigate down to spaces. Now this alone has nothing to do with at platform itself. This is isolated, it's completely separate. And really, if this is all you use on DigitalOcean, that's probably generally okay too, because it works really well with Django as its own service. And it also works really well with your app platform service, which is what I'm sort of assuming you're doing. And so now we're gonna go ahead and create a space. Okay. So initially you're gonna have to choose a data center region. Now this region to me should be as close to you physically as possible. That's actually not entirely needed if you end up activating the content delivery network, which is something I intend to do. A content delivery network will actually bring your static files all around the globe to make it really easy for your users to access them, which is really, really nice, easy and fast. Uh, but of course, we don't actually have a subdomain just yet, so we're not going to set up the content delivery network part. So the question, of course, is which data center region are you going to choose? I'm going to choose New York because it's, number one, the closest to me in Texas here. And then number two, my actual app platform app is also in New York. So I'm just kind of keeping those together just for my own purposes. Now, allow file listing. We actually don't need either one of these. It's kind of like, hey, do, they, do you want to allow people to see the name and size and other metadata of these files? Not actually see the files, but just actually that general data. I'm just going to leave it restricted. Next, we're going to ch uh, choose a unique file name for this. And in this case, I'm going to call it try Django, right? And so notice this space origin URL. This is something that's going to be important. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it and I'm going to bring it into my settings.py. And I'll also bring in the link to that blog post, but I'm going to go ahead and leave this in here for a minute. And you can add it to a project. You probably need to add it to a project. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create space project on DigitalOcean. That is okay. So what we just did here is we actually created a bucket called try Django. That bucket's URL is right here. There's not a whole lot more I need to do here. Now settings, of course, I can change all of these settings. As we saw, we see what the endpoint is here as well. Uh, and then we can also destroy it. So there's not really a whole lot of settings we need to have. But what we do need to have is actual access to the data here. Like I need API keys to get here. So one of the ways you can get these API keys is by going back into spaces and click on manage keys. And once you scroll down a bit, you'll see that you've got spaces access keys. Now I already have a basic one, but I'm going to go ahead and generate yet another one. This time I'm going to call it try Django dev and I'll go ahead and hit enter here. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to actually set these keys into our environment variables. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this one. And in .env, I'm going to go ahead and do AWS access key ID. And we're going to set it equal to that key. Okay, and then we'll copy the next one and then call this AWS secret access key. And we'll set it equal to that. Now, I mentioned that this is S3 capable, which means that we can use a third party package called Django Storages, which we will in a moment, that are going to treat these keys as you normally would with AWS keys. Okay. 
So basically, it's a username and password. Just think of it that way for this particular environment. So along those lines, we can also generate two new ones as try Django and prod. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And now those same environment variables I actually want to put in my production environment. So again, I'm sort of assuming that you're going to follow along with me on this one. I'm going to put it on the app level environment variables. And we're going to go ahead and hit edit. And yet again, I'll use AWS access key ID and AWS secret access key. And then I'll go ahead and grab those keys for the production. Okay, and there we go. These ones we want to encrypt. I'll go ahead and save that in my production side. And I'm pretty much done with handling production related things. I now have the keys necessary. Now, one of the things you might consider doing is maybe the AWS bucket name. And in this case, we've been using Try Django, right? So you could totally do that as well. I'm actually going to omit that because I'm not going to change my buckets. And of course, when I mean buckets, I mean the actual spaces themselves. So if you create a new space, that's a new bucket, if you will. Okay, so I'm going to stick with this right here. All right, so now that we have our environment variables or really just the keys we need to be able to access our bucket, it's time to configure our Django project as needed. So we're going to go ahead and run pip install django-storages and boto3. This will install these two different packages. Okay, so Django Storages itself has a bunch of configuration options for AWS S3, as we see here. And this is essentially what we're doing. It does have one for DigitalOcean as well, but this is essentially what we're also doing. And notice that it's really just saying, hey, go look at the S3 docs. So uh, that's kind of the key here as to what we're trying to implement. So it's really cool. It's really, really useful to use Django Storages because it just makes things a lot easier on us. Okay, and so now that we've installed those things, I'm also gonna run pip install upgrade pip to get rid of that warning. You can do that if you want. Now I'll go ahead and do Django-Storages in here in our requirements and Boto3. Okay, great. So now, oops, let's go ahead and make sure that this is spelled correctly. So now inside of my try Django configuration folder, I'm gonna make a new Python module called CDN. I'm just calling it CDN for now because eventually I want this to be a content delivery network. And we're gonna turn it into a module by adding init in here. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in conf.py. So this is gonna be our main configuration here. So I'm gonna go ahead and import OS. Now the first couple are related to our environment variables here, right? So naturally I can place them in like that or I can just do os.environ.git of that access key ID name, and then also of the secret key. Okay, and so this is going directly correlated to what's in the documentation here. AWS access key ID and secret key. Okay, so the next part is gonna be our bucket name. We will use that, so AWS storage bucket name. And this is, in my case, it's try Django. You will not be able to use try Django because I just did, at least in this region. Um, it might work in another region, but this region is now mine. You, you won't be able to do it. You might be able to do it try Django dash three or something like that, but it has to be unique across this entire system. Next, we're gonna do the AWS S3 endpoint URL. And this is actually accessible in a couple places. First off, I could literally just go into my settings again and copy this and do HTTPS colon slash slash. There you go. So that's all we really need for the AWS S3 endpoint. And there are a couple other settings that you might end up using. I'll just go ahead and copy and paste them. Something like this where you have the actual location available with the bucket name and the endpoint. And then you can also set cache control parameters to where it'll actually be cached for up to a day or so. Cool, so that's those things. Next, what we need to do is come into our CDN and do backends.py. So what this is, is actually where we're gonna end up storing our static files and our media files. Media files are where we actually 
upload user uploaded files. So in a file field or an image field, something we haven't covered just yet because we haven't set this part up. So what I'm gonna do here is do from storages dot backends and then s dot s3 boto3. We're gonna import the s3 boto3 storage class. And then we're gonna go ahead and define these. So static root is gonna be static root s3 boto3 storage. And we just set in the location of being static. That means that on my actual static file server inside of here, inside of these files, it's gonna automatically have a folder in here called static for those. And then the next one would be our media root, media root being anything that's uploaded through a file field in a model, it's gonna automatically go there. Cool. And so back into our configuration, we actually want to reference those locations, right? And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add in my default file storage. And this is going to be try Django dot CDN dot backends dot media root. And it's going to be the name of that class. Let's go ahead and grab that class here. Just like that. Oops, not the static one, but the media one. There we go. And then we're going to do something very similar to this. I should say default and we're gonna call this now static files storage and we'll grab the static file storage class. Okay, so um, these two are the configuration settings that need to happen to tell Django to use these classes, which really includes the locations that we wanna store those items in. Now we could change those locations, right? So if you wanted to, you could say user uploads or something like that, uh, but I'm gonna leave it in as media and static because that's what's very common to do. Okay, cool. So now that we've got this, let's go ahead and update our settings.py to actually work with Django storages. So if we scroll up a bit and go into installed apps, we want to add in storages here. So typically speaking, what I do with installed apps is I do third-party ones and then my own internal and so we'll call this storages, okay? And so with that, what we wanna do is now scroll down to the bottom, right under where my original static root was declared. And we're gonna do from.cdn.conf, we're gonna import all. And I'll go ahead and say no QA. This will be good for letting VS Code know that this is fine for now. And so realistically, when you actually do an import of something of these of this kind, you would wanna import each variable, right? So this is actually not good practice. So no QA would kind of tell VS Code to, hey, don't worry about this. Or you could actually import each one of these things, you know, individually like this, right? And I actually am just gonna leave it as simple as possible for now and just do that. Okay, so just having the configuration in another place. Of course, we could always copy and paste this and actually leave it into the settings. Um, but if you ever need to change these settings, it's just a lot easier to jump in and change them like this based off of what it is that you're working on. Okay, so the key things here are the location of our configuration folder is this right here, then the CDN folder or directory, and then of course the backends module, and then the actual classes themselves. Great. So now we should have everything set up and ready to go. So what I'm gonna run is python manage.py collect static, hit enter, and we're gonna go ahead and say yes. So what should be happening here is it's gonna take a little bit of time, but what should happen, assuming that we did all of the configuration correctly and we set up all of the cr credentials correctly, we should actually get some files coming in to our try Django space right? So uh, inside of DigitalOcean. And it's going to take a minute to actually do it. But notice I already have this static folder in here. And it has admin and recipes. Like, so it already has all of the data that I wanted originally from this, which is great. So it actually did bring it into that production environment. 
Um, and so now what we can do is just verify this in our project. Let's go ahead and make sure our server is running still. Sure enough, it is. And so on the admin itself, we can inspect the element. Um, and we now see where this stuff is coming from, right? And notice that it is signed. So it actually has a password of some sort on here. So if I go ahead and copy this link and paste in here, it's giving me a full-on signed item here. And I can actually, you know, try and access base.sss base.css by itself, and it gives me this access denied. That's because this file itself is not a public file, but rather one that Django Storages and Boto3 need to sign, but it takes all of that for us. It does it for us, right? Uh, which is really nice. It makes things a little bit more simple. And then if we go on our homepage, we can see uh, the same, you know, link that was coming through specifically for that CSS and the custom CSS that we created. And, you know, yet again, um, I should not have access to it, uh, which is pretty cool. And so if I did want to make these things public, let's actually go in here and we can click on more and we can go to manage permissions and then we can make it public. That would be a, a, a not an easy way, but a clean way to just make things public. The reason I say it's not easy is because if you have thousands upon thousands of static files, uh, what would be better to make it public is to, you know, come in here and go to the Bodo 3 docs, which is just this link right here. You could actually learn how to make things public for S3 with Bodo 3. Um, but that's, you know, a whole nother level of complication that we're not going to cover right now. This is much more about just getting these static files up into a production server. The other part of this is when we actually want to upload files, those are also going to go into a production server. Okay, so the last thing to note is to revisit this idea of being able to move our buckets given any given environment. So what that means then is in my environment variables, I'll go ahead and give my bucket name of try Django. And now in my configuration, go ahead and do os.environ.git of that bucket name. And then we can use that same bucket name in this AWS location here. Okay, so now it's definitely based off of environment variables. So since I did change that, I also want to change that in my production server just to make sure it happens in there as well. And so we're going to go ahead and hit edit and AWS bucket name, try Django. This one I'm not going to actually encrypt. I'm just going to go ahead and save it. Um, now, my GitHub is having authentication errors for this particular project. So no worries to me that this isn't working yet. We will actually redeploy the project. Uh, but I want to get in the habit of adding the environment variables when necessary. Um, and so now it's actually very, you know, scalable or at least very easy to change environments in production. So I could actually change from this TriGiga one and consider maybe a production version of it. Um, and then the other part of this is the environment variable that we had in here, which disabled our collect static. I could now turn that off because I now would have actual a, an actual place for collect static to go. There's actually a production grade place for it to go, which I think is also uh, pretty cool. So that's getting our static files set up in pr to production and as well as development environments. So let me know if you have any questions on that one. Otherwise, let's keep going.